Welcome, everyone. It seems like it's been a long time for those of you that uh, have been with me for a long time. How many of you are here for the first time? Whoa. Okay. Has a lot been going on in your life lately? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see the perfection that, of what's happened since December. 1212, 1221, and so on. Everyone thought there was going to be some really huge dynamic things happen. And everybody thought, huh, nothing happened. Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> it was all inside. It was all inside. I'll be talking about the new rays that are coming in. I already spoken of, and Archangel Michael has explained quite a lot, but we're going to have to focus on it a lot so that we understand that the rays that have been sending down the divine blueprint for the past 2,000 plus years, those have been slowly, slowly being shut off. So that the new divine blueprint, the new divine schematic could come in on, those rays are now higher frequency, the colors are changing, mostly to crystalline, mostly to the iridescent or the luminescent colors, but they are changing. And so we're going to talk about the turmoil that everybody is experiencing, everyone. At our level, it is a cleansing because when we took in that energy during that portal, that window of time, it really came in strong. And so it created a lot of turmoil in our bodies. I, after we talked about the uh, symptoms, the, the flu and the uh, horrible coughing and the fever uh, that some are having and, and I, that I had. I, we have been hearing from people all over the world that this has happened to as well. And so we had to, that all of that had to come up and be transmuted so that we could handle this new energy. So be patient. This is a, what you might say, Michael said it's like you're coming to neutral. You're shifting gears so that you can get back to center. We have been off center. We still can move into the sacred heart, and it's been kind of a trial and a test to not get caught up in the negativity that's been going on. But it is important that we do so because we are going to begin to manifest things much quicker than we have in the past. And as a co-creative manifester, if we are scattered and we are sending out distorted energy, we're going to create a lot more chaos. And so, like Michael said, you have walked the path, you have studied, you have integrated, you have learned, you are turning over to your soul self and your higher self, all of the information that, uh, and the techniques and the, uh, the things that it took to get us there, now it's time to put it in practice to really put it in practice. So, we will be recapping for the live stream very quickly, precisely, the major tools that we have given you over the years. The, the meditations, the techniques, and so you won't be bored because they're going, for those that have been around for a long time, because every time that you hear them, they, they are um, cleared a little more, they're activated a little more, they're stored in your sacred mind so that they become yours. We have been giving you knowledge, information. You have to integrate and make that information yours so it can turn to wisdom, so that you can then live and be the wisdom along, the wisdom teachings and the wisdom uh, vibrations along with the techniques and being grounded still in the third and fourth dimension as we soar. And the third and fourth dimension aren't bad, it's just that they need to be brought back into a spectrum of light that is acceptable, the duality and the polarity. So, Randy, why don't you come up and do just a very brief meditation for this group to start that pyramid, just, if, if, will you? And then we will expand it when we get the others, but I want, uh, I want this group to set the tone, the level that 
this pyramid will be, the level of the fifth dimension of this environment, of your radiance, of your soul self. We are going to set the vibrations of what that pyramid is going to be. Before I get started, I'd like to connect with everybody. So if you're wondering what the heck I'm up to here, that's what I'm doing. So if you haven't already, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and relax, moving deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, going within, moving into the essence of your sacred heart, the chamber of your sacred heart. Connect with that beautiful part of you, that sweet, clear part of you. There's a portal in your sacred heart, <clears throat> and the back portal of your sacred heart is going to open shortly, and we will pass through that. You will pass through that. We will each pass through that, moving to the pyramid in the fifth dimension for this group. And anyone who's listening or watching this later as well will be a part of this group. So the portal is now opening, and as we pass through that portal within your sacred heart, move up to the group pyramid for this particular group. And it's being created as we go to that pyramid. You'll notice that there's a capstone on the pyramid, and there's a crystal penetrating the capstone. This crystal also penetrates down through the capstone and hangs above a crystal table within this group pyramid. Under the crystal table is a transformative violent flame. And around the table are crystal chairs. <clears throat> and there are enough crystal chairs for everyone in this group and as this group expands, more chairs will be created. So now if you'll have a seat in one of those crystal chairs, you'll notice that it conforms perfectly to your body. There's a spiraling ray coming forth from the crystal which contains all of the attributes of our Father, Mother, God, radiating out into the pyramid the appropriate amount for this group and each and every one within this group. Moving a little deeper now, moving deeper within, going even a little deeper, deeper and deeper within. Relaxing even more. As we sit at the table in our crystal chair, we'll call upon the violent flame to cleanse, harmonize, balance, to transmute any and all discordant energies within any and all within our group. see and feel or sense in some other way as this violent flame takes over the pyramid and surrounds us in a cool yet warm pleasant energies of the violent flame, the transmuting energies of this 
wonderful violent flame. Feel gratitude for this experience. This energy, this wonderful violent flame is indeed a, an intelligent energy. And the more we appreciate what it does for us, the more we experience this transformative energy. Appreciation and gratitude, feeling appreciation and gratitude for the transformative energies of the violent flame. And now as the flames subside slightly, there's always a little bit under the table, of course. The crystal is now being activated and filling the pyramid with lightning-like energies, filling any voids which were created by this cleansing experience we just went through, filling these voids with higher energy, higher balanced, higher vibrational energies Now from this point within the pyramid, we're going to move back into the room, but we're going to stay in the pyramid at the same time. And as we move back part of our energy into this room, we're bringing down some of that fifth dimensional energy into this room. And I'm going to ask, and we'll be doing this a lot this weekend, I'm going to ask that when you do open your eyes in a few moments, that you maintain a part of your attention on your sacred heart. So I'm going to ask that you stay in this state, this altered state, open your eyes and look forward now with part of your attention within your sacred heart, maintaining your, splitting your energy, so to speak, where part of your energy is in your sacred heart, part of your energy is also looking at me. So if you'll open your eyes and look forward, but keeping some of that energy within your sacred heart. Okay. Go ahead and go ahead and go ahead and talk about. Take your turn talking about what's happening a little bit to you and so on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because we we've still got another twenty minutes. So. Okay. Well, I'll, this is something I was going to talk about uh, previously, but uh, I'll touch on it now, and that is some of the things that are happening on the, with us, as Rana said, a lot of us are going through changes on the planet. And it's not just us, though. It's also corporations, religions, governments, the planet itself, and us as individuals, of course. We're feeling it, too, aren't we? Yes, we're, we're uh, going through some trials and tests and turbulation. And that's as it should be. Of course, we'd probably like it to be another way, but um, that's the way it happens to be at this time. And we'll be going, I'll be talking more about that uh, a little bit later. And... For as far as my own experience, I had my own experience with a bout of, a, geez, what was it? I don't know, flu maybe, something like that. And I, I don't get ill very often, but um, went to visit my mother, and uh, she's uh, in an area where there are other people who were getting ill, and uh, my sister and myself, and one of my sisters and myself, and uh, a niece. Both came down with something like Rana had, only it was a little different. And after that experience, after that happened, there was, I don't know, something changed. Something shifted within me. I, and I can't quite say exactly what that was. It was, there's just, I could feel that there was a shift, something physically. And... Of course, while I was going through that experience, it wasn't uh, a lot of fun. 
but uh, it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't last for me as long as it did for Rana or my sister either, for that matter. She had the, it had a more of a, an effect on her. And so, I'm not sure what else you want me to talk about. No. Anything in particular? If you, that's good. Yeah? It's okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Those who um, join us for our webinar, monthly webinars, we had to postpone it twice because um, I had totally lost my voice. And um, the coughing was so violent that I felt like I had broken my ribs. And I knew, I knew that a big transition was happening. It was, they, they, Michael and even Dwal Cool does not like to call them initiations anymore. In the past, they called them initiations. They said they just prefer to say that we've moved into another frequency level of a, of a sub-dimension. And so in each sub-dimension, uh, there are different um, uh, universal laws, that are, or uh, they're a part of the universal laws, but you access more, and um, there's new energies there, information that we can then tap into, higher frequency energy. And so we're moving through, we are working through right now the seven chakras and through the solar system energy of the planets, which send down energy frequencies. And we're moving through, we've been moving through the levels, sub-levels of the third dimension as we balance and harmonize, and that's what that means. The ascension is, and would, could we put up the, um, so they can see um, the new triangle, Trinity of Consciousness, 144. 144 it is. <laughs> and I'll be over, we'll be going over this again, but this is a, a, a picture that I downloaded, that was being downloaded now for a couple of months. And so you can see that it's a triangle and a negative, positive pole and the emotional, mental, spiritual. So it is a triad and that is duality consciousness. So we've got a pillar of light and we built a cross of matter. Only it was only supposed to be that light path of duality consciousness, and then just a little way out of that into the void, the unmanifested world. However, our cross of matter became so unwieldy, as you've heard me say many of times, and so that is what we're doing. And as we do that, we are moving up that path of light. As we said, Michael said, when he told me what he wanted the, the seminar to be about, call for action. We are opening a pathway for others to follow. That's the pathway. We're, walk, we're moving up that as we move into the fifth dimension. So we're balancing and harmonizing the first, second, and third dimensions to a degree so, so we can be on Earth. We're moving through the negativity the mass consciousness belief system in the fourth dimension. And so what we are doing is we're the vanguard walking that path, opening the way. So every time you have one of these initiations, you are moving into a new frequency plane of consciousness. So does that make more sense? Does that make sense to you? Okay. And so what we want to do is to give you a refined set of tools to use. We've added to some things. Uh, we, as you go along, you'll find you delete some things that you really don't need to do anymore. So as we go through all of this, the reason we want you to stay in an altered state is so this information, we want to get you down 
to the alpha level, that, that alpha level that's comfortable for you. Your higher self is going to monitor. And it will not let anything go into your sacred mind or your sacred heart that isn't compatible with your belief structure. So you don't have to worry that you're in an altered state and you will be given things that you do not want to take as your truth. You will decide later on, too, what of these things you want to use that you want to become your truth because you have to be very careful what you choose as your truth because that's what your higher self and your oversoul is going to hold you to. I want you, each of you to envision a stream of light coming our way, filling this room with your energy. And we are sending a stream of light to you. This is a time of reunification. This is a time of coming together. In just a few moments, we're going to go into, and I will be doing a brief meditation with you. We will be going into a pyramid of light at a level in the fifth dimension that we have already set with the group here with us in Reno, Nevada. And that is so that we can fill that pyramid of light with the energy of all of those who are here and each one of you. So many people feel isolated around the world. They feel alone. We are strangers in a strange land sometimes it seems. And so we want you to know you are not alone. We are soul companions on this journey. And when you go into that pyramid of light and you leave an etheric replica, if you don't know what that means, we'll be talking more about it later. But it is a beautiful facet of your God self, just like you are. We are an etheric replica embodied within us of a greater being, our oversoul, our resident oversoul, and the other fragments of our higher oversoul throughout this subdimension. We're going to be covering a lot of material. This is teachings that Archangel Michael began to give me in 1992. Some of you have heard me tell the story about my journey. And when I began to take mess get messages downloaded from him, he said, you are to put at the bottom of the message, copy freely and share. And that is what I have done ever since. And so therefore the messages go all around the world. It's like a pyramid that is building as everyone joins, as everyone comes together. Those pyramids that we build or create, we think, are already there. They're already in the different levels, the different Levels of the fifth dimension, some even in the higher, a few. No, they're not really. We have some spheres of light in the higher fourth dimension that take us to. We can go to, into a sphere of light and it'll take us into the fifth dimensions. But he said that the pyramids do not start until at the first level of the fifth dimension. I'm going to be getting an awful lot of input from Michael. This is a very special, like I say, unique time. As we, I, we spoke a little earlier, we said that everyone expected such great things to happen at the 12-12. And a lot were disappointed. They thought they were going to be lifted off and, and that was it, get away from all of this. Not. But there was a great happening, it was all internal. It was all within each of us. And so, before we begin, we are going to go into this pyramid again so that all of you who are watching us at the live stream will be able to be in that great light space with us. And it will be there and you can go there any time you wish. And so 
to make it so that everyone is comfortable with this. Some people, some of us who have been doing this for a long time, we can move in and out of our pyramid anytime we want. And you will be able to also. But instead of going out of the back portal of our heart like we do now that have the back portal of our heart open, we're going to go through, we're going to bring a sphere of light down, and we're going to go through the crown chakra and move down into the sacred heart. For many of you, this will be the beginning of activating your sacred heart. And so if you will close your eyes, and you will take a deep breath, as deep as you can, and blow it out forcefully. Take another deep breath, deep, 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 as much as you can, and then blow it out forcefully. Now take one more breath as deep as you can, and just sigh it out. Now, however you perceive, whether you are visual internally, your third eye is activated and you actually can see pictures, or if it's just your imagination that you use to create what we are going to do. Whichever way you use is valid and they both work. And so in your mind's eye, just lift it up, your consciousness and your soul is kind of directing this, your soul self is directing a lot of what is going on within you. So your soul self is going to move up that column of light with your consciousness and, and, and your etheric body and is going to move up from your sacred heart. It's going to follow the path of the spine up through the mandula oblongata, up through the brain and out the crown chakra. And so you will move up that path to the highest level that is appropriate for you. And a sphere of light is going to come down from your divine I am present. And you are going to be incorporated into that sphere of light. And so now you move out of your column of light and you move swiftly into this great pyramid that has been created or activated, I should say, in the mid-higher range of the fifth dimension. And so now you will move toward the opening. It is a great crystalline pyramid. It has a double terminated crystal extending from the top and it is like, like a lighthouse. The colors are sweeping out through the solar system. Sweet, great sweeping beams of light. And you move in and you move out of your sphere into your etheric body. Your etheric body is able to handle, you might say, this higher frequency light. And you find a crystal chair. And you are seated. And in the middle of this floor is a violet flame. And hanging down over the violet flame is the other end of that double terminated crystal. And some of those light frequencies from our Father, Mother, God begin to sweep through this room. And this is where you're going to come. You can ask to come here during your sleep time in, in your astral travels, in your etheric body, or of course in your personal pyramid, or the world pyramid, which we will discuss just a little later but ask your angelic guides and your higher self to take you to the place that is most appropriate for you. For we are traveling at night and we are integrating, transmuting, rearranging molecules within our body, rearranging cells, memories, seed crystal cells down to the atomic level. And there are a lot of dark crystals that we have of the past memories, negative, imbalanced energies that is creating problems for us. That is what we are here to do, to begin or to activate or to assist you to release all of that negative energy into the violet flame so you do not have to send it out into your world to experience that, that infinity sign or that circle of, that law of the circle that goes, that whatever you send out, 
you must experience, whether it's negative or positive. And now, each and every one of you, I would like for you to imagine one thing, one thing that you feel is hindering you on your journey that is giving you right now that you're giving too much attention to because it is either irritating, painful, or it is a lesson that you need to resolve so you can move forward. What is that one thing that you feel at this time is the most important to release? And cup your right or left hand, whichever you prefer, and watch it form in your hand. It'll be, it could be a square, it could be a circle, it could be anything. Let it appear. Let it appear symbolically in your hand. Look at it. Is it very dark? Is it heavy? Intuitively, we're going to be working a lot with our inner senses. Intuitively, feel where this energy is anchored in your body. And now you will say, for my greatest good and the greatest good of all, I release you into the violet flame to be transmuted into the higher frequencies of the light. And then those higher frequencies can move back into your body so that they can be used again, reprogrammed. These are beautiful. These, they will end up beautiful little diamond crystalline shapes, vibrant, iridescent, luminescent. So symbolically throw that thought form, that image into the violet flame. And watch as all of these beautiful tiny, minuscule, crystalline energies in a diamond shape float free. And they begin to encircle the room. And they go back to their owner, the energy belongs to, and see that energy enter into your sacred heart. And now as you take a deep breath, if you know how to do the infinity sign, do the infinity sign. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Now see this energy coming out like a beam of light to each and every person that's in the pyramid. Radiate your energy out and feel. Feel what you're receiving. Stop for a moment and let's just feel that energy as we trade our we trade each other our love, our support, our wisdom, our strengths. How does that feel? So now the people in this room have already left an etheric replica in this pyramid. So for those of you who are watching from far distant places, you are going to leave an etheric replica here as well. And so very quickly, we move back into that sphere of light. And we move down that column of light as we bring back more or some of this wonder, wondrous energy and the vibrations of the love, the love cells, the beauty of every person who is united with us now. And feel that go back into your heart center, but maintain that level as you open your eyes as we give you these teachings. I'm going to tell you a story. It's going to be quite condensed, but I just want to hit the highlights. Archangel Michael has asked me to do this. I was on, I have been on the path for quite a long time, but not really actively until the 80s. In 1992, Archangel Michael came to me, and it was pretty amazing. They always say that the greater the gifts, the greater the tests. I was in a second, wonderful second marriage with my husband of 45 years. We had our 45th anniversary last week. And 
he was with the airlines, and we could travel all over the world, first class. It was like, it was, after being so very poor when I was young, it was wonderful. And a master teacher came to me after we retired, and I began to feel this divine gift intent that I needed, I needed something more. The, the cocktail parties, the golf parties, the trip, and uh, all of the country clubs, uh, it began to pale. My soul began to really nudge me. And so I began to study. A master teacher, a lot of you have read my story in my first book on Wings of Light, but a master teacher, Triton, came to me and worked with me for about five or six years. He was from the causal plane. He was a facet of my higher self from the mental causal plane. It was sent down and bypassed the other levels of my higher self because that was a part of my blueprint that I was to begin to bring forth the teachings of Archangel Michael. And so in 1992, in February, when Michael came to me and said that I was to be his messenger, that same year, I started taking the messages. And like I say, after February of 1992, I put out a message every month except one in December of 1996 when we moved from San Diego to Reno because I did not have a computer. So, but during that time, I moved into a really a testing time. My youngest son, my older son called me and said that he was on drugs and that he could, he was poss possible that he wouldn't live because he was into such heavy duty drugs. And I was devastated, of course. He lived in Montana, he didn't live with me. He was up with his father. He was in his, how old would he be? He was about 20, 20 in his 20s. And so it was so painful for me. I said to Archangel Michael, I, I don't know if I can go on. I don't know if I can do this. And he said, we will help you. But let me tell you this, too many people who, who in the past, too many dear souls who came to earth to be teachers and way showers, diverted from their path in a false sense of loyalty to their blood family. Your family is much vaster. You have a family, a soul family, that needs you and needs what we're to bring forth. And it is a part of your divine blueprint, your mission. I said, then you have to help me. And I used to teach a pow sound that we would make at the back of the throat. I'm not going to make it. It's going to be a little hard on my heart. But a very deep pow to break energy. Very deep do it two or three times, and it would break the energy. You know how your heart will ache, and you will feel the burden? It would break that energy. And then Michael would send down his love, and he wrapped that ache and that pain and that love for my son in a beautiful sphere of light and tucked it away in my heart so that I could go forward. And at the same time, we had when we retired, we had invested in a tax shelter that was legitimate at the time. A lot of my husband's retirement money. And then Congress changed the rules and they started going after the little guys. This, this was in the 80s that it began. We paid back what we thought we owed, but they ended up taking it to tax court. De December of 1992, I got a tax bill for 18,000, 22,000, and about, in, in other words, they took, they took, we owed them all of our retirement money. We ended up with $11,000 and almost lost our home. My husband had a start, uh, an attack the day after that happened. And so I had fought, I fought that for two years all the time. Michael helping me through it. He would say, only you can take away your abundance. This is a test you will prevail. And I always say, how would you like to be told to bless the IRS? <laughs> they were just a vehicle, our government tax system. And so he said, it will return to you tenfold and more. And it has. And every test that he has had me experience, 
I can see the justice for it, and you should be able to too. You can see the reason why. If you've learned the lesson, you won't have to repeat it. And if you see the justice in it, then you've gotten the wisdom from it. And so that ties in most with this most recent big test that I was to went through. My husband was changed at that time. You might say he went from what we call an A-type, very assertive, active. He was a, a um, had over 4,000 people under him in the airlines at that time when he retired. And so he'd been a very dynamic, very forceful man. He turned drastically at that time and um, became more like just very passive, um, didn't want to participate, has only flown, tw flown twice in all that time. But anyway, I went forward. I took the steps along with the lessons, some of them were, very, were difficult, but there was always magic in them. And there was always miracles in them. And gradually, step by step, each time, I could see and feel myself changing. Well, we're going to fast forward now to this last year. Dwal Kul told me some time ago, he's, my, he's a mentor. I've had a number, I've been with him for a long time. And he talks to me a lot about the ancient teachings because I had to read all those ancient books so we could update them and bring all that information up, up to this time. It was valid at that time, but it is expanded into higher wisdom. It's like taking grade school teachings and fast forwarding them to college classes. And that's why I had to read those because that was the mode of, modality that we were, we were working with. And so my husband gradually began to develop dementia, and it was okay. We managed for quite a while, but this last year has been a great trial because it was getting very bad. He would be very angry, uh, frustrated, and uh, just so many things that people you hear about, I'm not going to go into them, but so many things that you have to put up with. They, they're like little children, naughty little children sometimes. And so at the time that I got, got this acute illness, this all of a sudden, I'm working on taxes, and I get this coughing spell that just, it was immediately, and it was so intense that it was like my ribs were broken. And I went into the living room and sat in my chair, and he, sit, he sat, would sit in his chair all day long, his recliner, and watch TV with, with it muted, without the sound on. Well, he got a different kind of flu. It just wasn't the same because mine was from here up, violent coughing, a fever, but no, no cold, no head cold, or, or uh, that kind of um, symptoms. Well, I'm sitting in my chair, too, and I'm very weak. And he gets up. My son, my older son, was there and was helping him walk. He fell about four or five times. He ended up falling out in the garage so that our two sons my son and my husband's son had to take him to the hospital. When he got out, we had to take him to a rehab. And I was told that, and I knew that he could not come home. And so we have him in an apartment. But Archangel Michael, and, and he's being well taken care of, so I am in my house alone. It was like I had, like I had my sanctuary my fifth dimensional environment and my 340 environment. So what I was about what Dual Cool said in the past with disciples who were on the path of initiation in the monasteries, the ashrams, they would be moving in levels. They would be outside t teachings on, like you might say, on the outer rim. And as they progressed, they would go closer and closer to the master. And he said there would come a time when these disciples would be put together with five or six people that brought up all their issues, that pushed all their buttons that they needed to resolve. And they had to work through those in order to progress. Well, my test was all in my husband. And that was when he said, you have to shift gears, get to neutral, so that you can stay focused and centered within your heart. Because as you do move forward and you become more uh, proficient at creating 
and you are able to call forth all the adamantine particles that you can embody from the kundalini, from the crown chakra, from the back portal of the heart. As you begin to use these tools, you have to be centered. We know we have to reach the mid-fourth dimensional level. But then when we move on up into the fifth dimension, then it is important that we do return to center. Return to center. And so I'd always sent energy out to him, like I do to other people, horizontally. In my meditation, I began to see one of the things that, they, that he said is, you could never resolve an issue at the level that it was created. So I began to see myself rise above it. And then I got this picture of me sending my lo loving husband streams of light. The streams of light were going to me, and it was like I was looking down on him. He was in a fog. And I was told that there were angels, and I saw them, angels of mercy surrounding him. And that light is going into the angels of mercy are embodying that light and the violet flame, so that when he is ready and opens his heart, it will be there waiting for him. And so I'm going to give you a new way. We are going to talk about that, of how we can. Oh, so many said, I have, I have a mother like that, a husband, a friend. But all of these tests that everyone is going through, it is a reason. You are in a very important phase of becoming a self-master. You have released the big, what you might say, the major issues. Have you, have, have you gotten the feeling like everything is kind of, the light is kind of closing in and getting stronger as it comes in? It's radiating out further, but it's almost like you are in this ovid of light, this protective light. And it is filled with the frequencies that you have drawn. If you've gone to the city of light, if you're tapping into the sixth dimension, whatever level you are able to access them, you are beginning to build what you might say, that light frame around you. And so Michael gave me the vision of seeing a path of light. And at the end was a sphere. And he didn't say it was over or it was done. He said, it is complete. And we're talking about the issue of my husband. It is all complete in that sphere of light. All I have to do is stay centered, radiate love, and take the steps. And so I share that with you so you will know that it's all for a reason. And there is help. Call on those angels that are around us. Allow them to help you to stay on that path of light. This is the battle of light and shadow, pillar of light, cross of matter, duality consciousness, Archangel Michael, and I wrote this as a sacred scribe. I'll talk about that later. The collective consciousness of humanity is slowly becoming aware of the extreme duality of the third and lower fourth dimensional frequency patterns that permeate the earth and the astral plane. Each and every person at some level is fighting the battle to attain an expanded self-awareness, which must include embracing both the light and the shadow side of yourself. This must be accomplished in order to return to the accepted range of duality and polarity. Each of you must recognize and claim your personal shadow side, your demons within, so to speak, so that these cells of negative distorted consciousness may also embrace the light of transformation. Human suffering is resulting, resulted from rigid thinking a sense of superiority and judgment of others, which leads to a separation rather than to unity consciousness and tolerance for opposing viewpoints. 
Can you accept the premise that your negative thought forms are also seeking release? They are rising to the surface of your conscious awareness, seeking illumination and higher truth just as you are. You must take responsibility for what you create, moment to moment. Your powerful, repetitious thoughts of today are creating your experiences of the future. Negative thoughts and actions result in distorted creations and chaos. Beloved, strive for the middle path, which will align you with the great gentle flow of the river of love life. More harmony, abundance, and joy prevail. Okay, before we go on, can you put up uh, the slide for the group pyramid, which is on four, number four? But before I do that, don't do that quite yet. This slide here, I'd like to acknowledge the person that created that slide. Teresa over here. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> okay, the group pyramid, please. That's number four, I believe. Yes, number four. I wanted to show this to everyone out there so that you can see the group pyramid where this is where we were just taken to the group pyramid. There is a crystal on the top of it. There's a violet flame beneath the crystal table and there are chairs around the table. Enough chairs for everybody in the group and as the group grows, the amount of chairs increase. So there's always enough chairs to encompass the group. And this does not really depict the size of this pyramid because as this group grows, it will be a huge pyramid. This is a portal that was created when Archangel Michael asked Rana to bury some crystals at Grimes Point. And when that was done, what year was that, Ronald? Do you remember what year that was? Uh, uh, um, it's been five or six years. Probably five know. or six years ago. At least, at least. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Or maybe more. Anyway, they, they had this, uh, they created that they paired the stones and had a ceremony there. And if you'll look here, you'll see a faint line here. This is a pyramid in there. You'll see a faint line there and another one coming down here. And the reason I'm showing you this is to give you an indication of that these pyramids actually do exist. This is empirical. I guess you would call it empirical. I kind of, you know, it's a proof, uh, something that's physical, so to speak, a digital picture of uh, an actual pyramid. And they didn't realize when they took this picture, this is Ron and Cindy down here, they didn't realize when they took that picture, and these were the days of, uh, they weren't digital photographs in those days. This was a uh, 35 millimeter camera. They didn't realize until they had the picture developed that this portal showed up in that photograph. Yeah, so what, what was that, Leticia? Oh, three other pictures, three other times that showed up as well. So some of us will be going to Grimes Point, and I'll be showing you where that area is. All right, let's move on to, well, before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about what we'll be covering here. We're going to be covering a lot of information rather quickly and touching on some topics and going deeper in others. And if you want more information on this, when you go to, if you, if you go to the CD program, the uh, Becoming an Alpha Master CD program, that's one place you can get more detail. Uh, Rana's book, Scripting Your Destiny, and also the glossary will have more detail on some of this information. So you can find that there, because I'm not going to be covering in the depth that you'll find it there today. So going to the alpha state, 
I want to talk a little bit about the alpha state before I go into that. The alpha state has been proven to put us into a place where we can learn quickly and more easily. And actually, anybody in here familiar with Lazanov, the Bulgarian, I believe it was a Bulgarian uh, doctor, <laughs> one person, he created a learning, a system of learning, especially language. He did, uh, he effectively, people were, could learn language in an accelerated pace. And uh, what he was doing was using, well, among other things, he was using, he was using uh, music, classical music. And uh, the music that's played at a 60 beat per minute pace, and it puts people into an alpha state by listening to that music. He, he was also uh, he was also a Raja Yoga master, and um, okay. he was quite. An, he he actually just passed away last year. He was an amazing individual. And I don't recall offhand the, the title of what he did, but some people are calling it super learning, super. There's a lot of different terms for what he taught, but if you'll Google Lazanov, you'll find that he was an amazing individual. And people learned language in a, at a, a much accelerated pace. So what we're going to do this weekend is we're going to spend a lot of time in an altered state. And so I'll be taking you down many times into an altered state. One of the things we'll do now in a little bit is go into an alpha state with the, the exercise that, uh, that Rana has us do. But these are some of the benefits uh, and uh, that, that you can, there are a lot of benefits for being in an alpha state, but the main one that I'll, I'll talk about today is being able to operate, eventually to operate, this is the ultimate goal, to operate at, a, at a, an alpha state throughout our day so that we have access to a lot more information. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out and driving a car if you're not used to operating in that state. So you might want to get familiar with it first. But once we're in that altered state and we're able to drive a car, and we actually have access to a lot more information than just our physical sight or our hearing senses and that type of thing. And we're also able to learn and, and uh, remain, maintain the information a lot, a lot uh, more effic efficiently and effectively. Let's see which question I want to go here. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to go over all the benefits right now, but uh, this is the, this, the alpha state one, and what we're doing first of all is visualizing a sphere at the top of our head, and we count down. We also, and I'll go into that count in a minute. We also form a mudra by placing our index finger middle finger and thumb together, forming a mudra. You can do that with either one hand or both hands. And the reason we're doing that is to anchor that feeling so we can put the, the fingers together like that and recall that feeling at will. And these, these are the, uh, oh, where were they here? I had them in there. There they are. The various brainwave states, beta, Alpha, this is the one that we're going to be spending most of our time in. We'll be, during this weekend, we'll be either in an alpha or a theta state quite a bit of the time, these two states here. The delta is more like, uh, we're usually when we're in a sleep state, we're in the delta state. And beta, of course, is during the day. And you can see here, it's pretty good indication. This is like the way most people are during the day. They're all over the place. They're, they're brain waves. An alpha state is a little more... Um, coherent, and of course the theta is even more so, it's uh, more of a coherent state, and a delta is, there's not much activity, it's pretty level. All right, so quickly, what we're going to do is put our, form the mudra, and I'm going to say three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 and we'll move into an altered state. And again, there's more detail on this, but we're not gonna spend a lot of time. So if you'll close your eyes, Place your attention on your crown chakra. There's a, there's a sphere of light there. Form a mudra by, by placing your index, middle finger, and uh, ring fingers together. Or not the ring finger, but the, the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger. Inhale. Exhale. 
three, three, three. Inhale. Exhale. Two, two, two. Inhale. Exhale. One, one, one. Moving even deeper now. Going deeper. Relax. Totally relaxed. Moving into an altered state, an alpha state. That sphere is now in the heart center, your solar power center, in the uh, sacred heart area. And any, it's not in any one particular place in that area, but wherever it needs to be, it will anchor. Relaxing. Relaxing. And now we're going to come back out of it and go in again. I'm going to count from one to five, and at the count of five, we'll be wide awake, alert, and energized. One, two, three, four, five. Eyes, eyes open, wide awake, alert, and energized. Now we're going to go back into it with an alpha state two. And the only difference is the alpha state two is going to come down and touch on the sacred mind. And uh, even here it's kind of going over, over this way, but I actually prefer coming down and following the inside of the skull, kind of coming, following the inside of the skull and come down and then down into the solar power center. Coming down. It could also come this way too and come over, but uh, the sacred mind is actually up in the upper back area of the, the uh, skull in this area here. So let's do that again. We're going to move down now, but this time the sphere of light is going to move back to the back portion. Coming along and then down. Eyes closed. Mood reformed. Inhale. Three, three, three. And the sphere moves back towards the sacred mind. Inhale. Two, two, two. Down a little farther with the sphere. Inhale. One, one, one. And the sphere ends up somewhere in the solar power center, wherever it's appropriate for it, each person. Relax. Relax. Now staying in that position, and you can open your eyes, but maintain that alpha state. I want to tell a story now about the alpha state. This is a very interesting story. I took a workshop a while back where a woman studied personally with Lazanov. And so she was used to going into an alpha state. She took a, uh, she was going to take a real estate broker exam in the state of Florida. And she studied for the exam and, and she wasn't really interested in gas and oil, but that was a part of the exam. But she figured, well, I, I want to deal with real estate. I don't really care about gas and oil. So I'm not going to really spend a lot of time on that topic. And uh, she carpooled with uh, several people to the test. And uh, when she got there and sat down and opened the test, what do you suppose most of the test was about? Gas and oil. Gas and oil. And this woman's name is Mary. And Mary thought, geez, what do I do now? I, don't, I didn't study this information. But she, it occurred to her that, well, I do know how to move into an alpha state. And so she started tapping on her thigh. She put her, her finger, her hand on her thigh, and she just took one finger and tapped at 60 beats a minute, started tapping, putting herself into an alpha state that way. So she, as she did that, she reached that alpha state, and she went down through the questions. And she just went by the way she felt for the answers. The 
test was over and she went back out to the car where the other people gathered and they talked about how they did on the test and quite a few of them actually didn't pass the test. Mary thought, geez, I feel kind of bad. Because she almost maxed the test. She got somewhere in the high 80 to 90 some, I don't remember exactly, but high 80 to 90 some percent on the test. She, was, she, uh, she almost maxed that test and, and didn't know a lot of the information, never studied the information. Pretty incredible story, a, very, a true story. True story. Okay, so a little more about that's uh, a little more about the uh, alpha state and how it can work for us. We're tapping into a lot more than our normal senses when we get into that. Well, one of the things I want to do, another thing I want to do, is is uh, play a metronome. The, Rana tells when I told Rana this story about the uh, Baroque music at 60 beats a minute and uh, moving into an alpha state, Rana said, geez, that kind of explains why. I think you said Michael guided you to buy a metronome or she bought a metronome and she didn't know why. It had been sitting there for years. But I want you to hear this. This is 60 beats a minute. And if, it, if you'll just tune into that, it'll just, you'll just feel yourself drifting into an altered state. And so think of that metronome as it goes like this, helping us to move into the right spectrum of light and shadow. Oh. Bringing it yes. all together. The light and shadow, yeah, yeah <laughs> being in the middle, in the center. Pretty hypnotic, huh? Just kind of the alpha there. state is the state we maintain when we become a living meditation. In other words, it's as if we have an angel or a spirit perched on our shoulder and we learn to move in and stay in that state. Um, I get around pretty good when I'm not in this mode. I'm not a crippled old lady. I, <laughs> but uh, because my vision has changed. I see more panoramic. And the depth perception, when, I'm, when Michael is in, he's not in fully yet, but he's here pretty powerfully. And so uh, my depth perception, it bothers me a little bit. So that's why I get kind of unsteady. But also, it's helping to balance and harmonize the right and left hem hemispheres of the brain. The alpha state is our state of consciousness that we want to maintain, that we need to practice all the time so that it is just, you can just go there very quickly. You want to use the different modalities and so on to do that, but you can just take a breath and you're there. And after a while, it becomes the level that you exist at. Randy used to meditate a lot more often and everything, and so did I, but we are in that state now, and we can move into our higher consciousness. You know how when you wake up from a dream, it closes off real fast? You've lost it because you were tapping into a higher dimension. And the frequencies were such that you got the information, but you couldn't bring it back down into your conscious mind. Well, the alpha state will help you do that. The alpha state will help you download that I get these uh, holograms of information, and Michael will slowly downgrade it, uh, download it, and um, so that I begin to get the picture just like that trinity of consciousness that we had there. And so that's a very important practice. It's one of your base practices to uh, work on so that it becomes very natural to you. Um, these, would you put up, go to the one where it says uh, the pyramid, uh, pyramids, 31, 32, I know. Uh, um, Third, it starts should, at 30, I think, right? Um, you showed some of them. But I just quickly want to run through the different pyramids. And the, they're all there. Uh, I, want the, I want the graphics, the, the graphics of them. There, okay. 
He showed you this one. That was the first one that was created, was the personal pyramid. And then the work pyramid. Only you and your angels or the higher beings of light go into this one. And then we have the work pyramid where we take people to resolve issues. It's where you put your thought forms that you want to create. It is your work pyramid. And so you do take others in there. You, you break agreements in that pyramid with all the people, the major people in your life that you have had a karmic dance with. You want to resolve that. So there, we have a method of breaking agreements with everybody at a soul level. And so then the next one he gave us was the world pyramid. Can you, can you put up the world pyramid? It's up there. You got it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here are all of these chairs, these crystal chairs that go up in this great pyramid. And when you first go there, you go to the level of your soul song your energetic signature. In other words, you are resonating at a certain frequency level of certain vibration. These, your energetic signature is the soul, is what your body is resonating at. That's what you're sending out. That is your energetic signature. As you reach and tap into those higher frequencies, it moves into the sacred heart, into your soul self. That is your soul song. That is how the being the higher realm identify us by our soul song. When our soul song lives to a certain vibration, it begins to radiate out, send out a cosmic call, a clarion call to the other facets of our soul self to begin to move in the next level. They're going to begin to move in and from the beginning of the fifth dimension. And it's going to, they're going to move into your column of light and you will download the information from your resident over soul self and then another one will be ready to move in. But we go into this world pyramid to share our love light. This is where we send our tithing. This is the epitome of the way to tithe. Because you see, those adamantine particles have to come through us and be qualified or be activated with our loving energy. And you have to come into a harmonic resonance of at least the mid-fourth dimension in order to do this. And so all of that energy is gathered and it has our earth frequencies in it. And so then the angelic realm and the angels take that and they do use it for the highest good. It is our part of giving back the energy to be used on the earth for the greatest good. And so we went to that pyramid for a long time. And each time you go, as your frequencies lift, you move higher up on the level to the higher frequencies of the world pyramid. So you will keep moving up in this pyramid as you progress. We built, for many, many years, we've been building group pyramids <clears throat> like we have built today all over the world. And those then would connect with the next one at different levels. And then there comes a time, can you put up the uh, world server pyramid? 137. Teresa just finished this. That's a, it, it, it's, a, it's called fractals, higher sub levels of the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension composed of Tetrahedron division fractals. Light source pyramid in the center must have firmly integrated balanced frequencies of the higher planes of the fourth dimension, centered within the sacred heart and attuned to our sacred mind. And so you don't have to do anything about moving from the group pyramid, you still leave it at the replica, to be introduced into the world server pyramid. Some are, ups, there's some are upside down and all throughout there, but it doesn't matter because there's no up or down there. There is no up or down in the higher realms. And you will be drawn to that little pyramid that is perfect for, that is your harmonic resonance, your soul song resonates to. And that is where we really begin to do our work. 
That is what we're doing now. This is like the ashrams or the hidden mystery schools of the past. The masters are there with us, working with us. And when you move into that world server pyramid, you are truly beginning to fulfill your mission. You are truly on the path of light and the acceleration of your frequencies, your vibrational patterns are going to create or increase exponentially. Pyramids of light throughout our universe. When we fragmented into smaller and smaller sparks of our divine self and went forth to fulfill the command from our Father and Mother God, a universal blueprint was created so that we would have a pathway back to the rarefied realms of this universe. Thus, the pyramids of light as way stations were created. As seekers on the path, in order to step onto the accelerated path of ascension, it is vital that you learn how to access the various pyramids of light. The process of evolution involves preparing your four lower bodily systems to integrate the next consciousness time self. This is the major reason why it is so important to create and use the different pyramids Archangel Michael has told us about. In reality, we are not creating them. They have been there waiting for us ever since we sank into the density of the material, material realm. The pyramids of light and the higher dimensions are vitally important in the ascension process. We are interconnected to our various pyramids of light and the sixth dimensional city of light via the trickle-down effect of adamantine particles. Streams of light, streams of higher frequency light spiral down from our etheric replica positioned in the city of light downward into our personal pyramid and into our etheric replica lying in repose on the crystal table. This blessed energy then flows back down our column of light into our crown chakra and into our sacred heart. We activate the adamantine particles of light with our loving intention. And after we have taken our portion, which flows through our physical vessel, thus life-giving energy flows out into to the world via the front and the back portals of our heart. We were across a matter. We're bringing that back into balance and harmony so that we are also, we're still going to be a cross, but it will be a cross of light. We could be called tributaries of the river of life light, for the streams of living light also radiate forth from our heart centers into the different pyramids we have created, as well as into our flower of life creator wheel, which then flows out into the material world and down into our mother earth to assist her in her evolutionary process. We strongly suggest that you set your intention to merge with your etheric replica in your personal pyramid every night until you're firmly, firmly can feel that energy. And then it makes it e much easier to incorporate the higher frequency vibrational patterns. Remember, each time you visit any pyramid in the fifth dimension, you bring down a little more of that fifth dimensional energy. You are gradually building or recreating or reactivating the ascension column of light that will surround and protect you at all times. Occasionally, you may ask to be taken to the city of light or into the amethyst pyramid of rejuvenation for healing. Or you may ask to be taken to the appropriate place for your greatest benefit. You, your state of mind before you fall asleep will determine to which realm you will journey in your astral body. So why not fall asleep with gratitude and love flowing forth from your heart center? One of the next things that Michael gave us was the breath of infinity. <laughs> Thank you. you. Want to put up the... Uh... <laughs> well, just, just to get your attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, oh. And... Um... <laughs> Well, it's always nice to have a little humor, right? <laughs> um, there was an 888 gateway. And uh, that was when we began to really tap into some of the galactic energy. And along with that, during that 888 gateway, 
And the eight, number eight is Archangel Michael's number. Okay. You better be assigned. And so we began to practice that. And uh, just, put up, just put up the picture, please, because I'm not going to read those. Can you want me to go in, go into that? Hmm? You want me to explain it? No, I'm going to explain okay. something else. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so in doing so, the first thing was we get to open the medulla oblongata. That's the ascension chakra at the back of the head. And so as you know, you start here in your solar power center. And there is a crystal seed atom there that is that place where it will activate. It's there. So when I, when I would say to you, let it come and go in the place it wants to, it will know where to go. We have many crystalline seed memory, atom, uh, memory seed atoms that are throughout our body. And at the appropriate time, with the appropriate frequencies, they activate. So therefore, mine is right, right in here somewhere. So we started practicing the infinity breath down through the root chakra, back around. And that began to speed up our frequencies. And along with that, then when we did the, when we did the binary sequencing, that made those infinity loops go much higher and much deeper. That was opening another pathway. It's almost like a thermometer. As our light began to build, it was going through those passageways. And as we progressed at each level, it would go a little higher and a little higher. So we were actually creating a pathway while we were learning how to activate and to use those tools within us. So it was, it was working within us, and it was also working without. Okay, the infinity breath. I'm going to have a, well, first, well, first of all, I'm, well, I'm going to have, have somebody come up to it. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit on, but first I want to point out a few points here. Can you hear me okay? Okay. First of all, the medulla oblongata, which is in this area up here, soft spot right at the base of the skull. The solar power center, which is, actually can go up even into the, uh, neck area in here, and our energy is going to start here, but the first, when we do an infinity breath, the first thing we do is we bring forth that feeling of love, because it is through the feeling of love that we activate and energize those adamantine particles. And what we're doing is we're going, on an in-breath, we're going to take that energy up over the, the top of the head and then back into the solar power center, and on the out-breath, it's going to move down through the root chakra and loop back up into the solar power center. And so, uh, Fabienne, if you'll stand, bring, come forward here. And let's see, let's come over. You're not standing in the light there. So what's, ha what's happening, that's fine. Yeah, that way's fine. So what's happening is this energy, Fabienne would uh, be, first of all, bring, bringing forth a feeling of love, a feeling of energy of love in her heart center, in her solar power center. And then as she exhales, the energy would come up through, through this area here and come out through this, the uh, medulla oblongata, loop back up over the top of her head, into the solar, back into the solar power center, and then down, come down through the, the root chakra and back up into the solar power center. And um, why don't you turn the other way? Because for some reason, some people get the a picture easy, visualize easier from one direction or another. I'm not sure how that works or why that works, but I've had people say, geez, can you draw that image facing the other way? Because I, I can't quite get it when it's faced that way. But when it's faced this way, I can get it. So anyhow, that's the way it works. I don't know why. <laughs> All right, the same thing. Then again, that energy is going to move from the solar power center in this area here, in the, in the solar power center in the, the heart area, up through the medulla oblongata, looping over the head, down into the back into the solar power center, down through the root, and back up into the heart center, into the solar power center. So we, an in-breath comes over, out-breath comes down. Okay, thanks Fabienne. 
And uh, let's just do that a couple times. Let's just do that a couple times. Yes. And uh, it might be easier for you to, leave, to look at the image. It might be easier for you to close your eyes, whichever, whichever is easier for you. And there's no pace. There's no particular rate to do this at. Or a, It can be a fast breath. It can be a slow breath. You can do it slow one time and fast another time. So uh, just closing your eyes if you want or leave them open. You, you'll, you first of all bring forth that feeling of love. It, you, uh, if it's not that easy to do, you could think of a place in nature that you love. You could think of a, an animal that you love. You could think of a person that you love. And just bring forth that feeling of love first. And when, when you're familiar with this, that can come rapidly. It doesn't, you don't have to spend a lot of time. You can bring that feeling of love very quickly. Okay, now inhaling, the energy is coming up over through the medulla oblongata over the head into the solar power center. Exhaling, back down through the root and back up into the solar power center. Inhale, exhale. Okay, so that's the affinity breath one. Could you put up the affinity breath two, please? So the, the, the main difference, of course, is that the energy is coming out through the back portal of the heart, the back portal of the heart. And some of that energy will continue, will continue going the same way we did on the Affinity Breath 1. So everything else is exactly the same. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this. Again, as I mentioned before, the information is out there in programs and books and so forth, and we're, we're going to cover a lot of material. So this is the infinity breath one, I'm sorry, infinity breath two. And essentially what we're doing is opening the back portal of the heart. I know personally, before I started doing this, I never even thought of the back portal of the heart. I didn't realize I had a back portal. I would, when somebody would say, open your heart, you know, I'm thinking, open your heart. But there's a back portal too, so it's important to open both portals and have an open heart. And that brings to mind what some people say, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable walking around with an open heart because if I'm walking around with an open heart, I'm vulnerable. And my answer to that is it all has to do with that, that thing we call frequency, that vibration, what we're vibrating at. I consider holding a high vibration to be a form of protection. So I can walk around with a wide open heart and be totally protected because I'm vibrating at a level where only things that are resonating with my vibration are allowed to enter my energy field, so to speak. And that's the way I look at it. And that's my feeling about it. Okay, so moving on now, let's look at a couple of others. And I'm not going to go in any particular order here. I'm just going to go over a few of the other infinity breaths. So let's take a look. Oh, and your question might be, how often should I do this? Well, once you're doing the infinity breath two, you don't need to go back to the infinity breath one because, as you can see, some of that energy is already going, taking that path. But how often should you do that? Well, I would say to do the infinity breath every day, several times a day, or whenever you feel so inclined. And I'll... There's another infinity breath that we'll be going over shortly that I do on a regular basis, but you, it could be this one. I will sit at a parking, at a stop sign, or, a, or I should say a stop light, and do the infinity breath sometimes, or whenever you feel like it. But especially, I would say in the morning, when a person first gets up, or, and before going to sleep, that's when I like to do the infinity breaths. So let's see, let's move on to affinity breath with, let's say, the uh, binary sequencing. So the affinity breath with binary sequencing, this is opening up, we're, we're moving into higher dimensions here. And, and this is going up into the ninth dimension here. So essentially we're doing the affinity breath and it just keeps going higher and higher and higher. And I might also add at this point that you can do that doing one infinity breath or two infinity breaths. You can take the energy up just above your head or you can take it a little bit higher. 
the next time a little bit higher without necessarily doing something like this. You can take the energy any place. Or you can take it up to the great central sun and down to the core of the earth or a city of light and down into the core of the earth or something like that. So play around with it. Have fun with that, uh, that, that infinity breath. If the infinity breath with binary sequencing well, it's an interesting thing about the infinity breath with binary sequencing because we only have to really do this one time. But when I first learned it, I didn't know that. So I did it for about a year every day. Um, and uh, so you don't need to do that. <laughs> it wasn't until I started teaching. It's interesting what you learn when you teach this stuff because uh, I didn't know until I started teaching the information that I didn't have to do some of this stuff that often. And this was one of them. This only, you only really need to do it once. And I've, I've done it. Of course, when you're teaching it, you're doing it as well, though. So uh, in any case, what you're doing is you're, again, doing the, the getting that, that heart energy, that uh, feeling of love. And then you also um, take a few infinity breaths to get, to get the energy, just regular infinity breaths to get the energy moving. And then you'll do the uh, a, a still point. And we're doing it in... Numbers like 2, 4, 8, 16, we're doubling the numbers or moving in, uh, well, would that be doubling the numbers? Yeah, 2, 4, yeah, yeah. doubling the numbers. Anyway, you're going up to, we're going up to 5, 12, and you've, you can even go higher than that, but we're, I'm not going to go through all that today. I just want to give you a, a brief explanation of the technique, and you would t do a few infinity breaths and it, uh, a 1. Or you do the, oh, the next one, you'd inhale. Two. Four. So that's the, the method still. until you get up to 512. Randy? Oh, what? Still point. Yeah, still point. Yeah. At the still point. Yeah. I, I was doing em a still point. Emphasize, emphasize the still point because a lot of people won't. I was sniffing there for the still point, but that is a, a still point. You're doing yeah. a still point there. Yes. Mm -hmm. It, it, you're inhaling one or two, four. You're inhaling at, at the number, and then continuing with the exhale again. So the short breath at that point is point. That's a still point. Yes. Mm -hmm. The kind of tightening and you're tightening the perineum and the, the abdominals and so forth. And again, I, I, I'm not spending a lot of time on this. I'd be going into a lot more detail if I was teaching in, in detail, but we're just touching on a lot of this information. Was that, was that what you were referring yeah, to? Yeah, to emphasize the still, that it mm -hmm. is called the still point. Mm -hmm. And that still point is our God moment. That is that perfect moment. Mm -hmm. And so we are getting used to um, going there or using that still point or moving that helps us move into our center mm -hmm. so the still point is very important uh, yes within the breathing and then coming back to center you know right yeah. and you can do the still point just with a normal sometimes i'll do that with just a normal infinity breath i'll in, i'll slowly inhale and i'll put a still point at that point maybe exhale and a still point there or i could Inhale and do one there. And we're going to do that right now when we go to the flower of life. I'll show you more about that method. So the infinity breath with the flower of life. And I would open this up to questions, but again, we're moving rapidly. So we're not we're going to cover a lot of Q&A with this type of thing right now. But if you do have a question about it, write it on one of those cards because we are going to have a Q&A tomorrow. We're going to be answering some of those questions if you have them. Okay, well, the infinity, infinity breath with the flower of life, what we're doing is we're, we're placing energy in these attributes. And you, you can eventually, of course, you could put physical attributes in there if you want, but these are, these are at a higher level, a higher vibration than physical attributes. And you can see what they are up here, peace, wisdom, intuition, creativity, inspiration, joy, self-mastery, balance and harmony in all things, abundance, humility, good health, vitality, and compassion. So these are the attributes. These are what we're putting into this wheel. And let's see if I can 
long way. So this is the this is the this is that wheel we were just looking at, and it's actually around us. We're creating this wheel around us, and we're we're doing infinity rest. We're doing twelve normal infinity rest, and then on the twelfth one, we're putting a still point in there. We're we're inhaling, and we're creating that still point where we're pulling in the perineum, tightening the abdominals, and then on the exhale, it could be also on an inhale, you can do it either way. Yeah, on the exhale, you're going, we're creating this loop out in front of the body, this loop right here, the infinity sign moving out in front and in the back. And then they'll start ratcheting over. They'll just go over on either right or left. Whichever way they want to go, they'll go on their own. We don't need to direct them. We don't need to ratchet them. We just do them in front of our body, and they'll, they'll take care of itself. And then on the final one, we're doing another still point on the final figure eight in front and back. It's a, if we're doing it on the exhale forward, we were at a still point, exhale, and the inhale would be on the, when it's coming back in from the back. And you can do that either when you're te teaching. If you happen to be teaching it, it always helps to, to exhale through your mouth so people can see what's going on. But I personally do it most of the time without that exhaling. I do it breathing through my nose for all of them. But sometimes I'll do it exhaling through my mouth as well. It can be done either way. The infinity breath with the flower of life. And so again, we're doing our, we're placing our attention on our heart center. We're bringing forth the feeling of love. We're doing 12 infinity breaths. Still point at the end. And then six infinity breaths front and back. Still point at the end. And then we focus on our heart center in, again, just embracing that feeling of love, focusing on a heart center for a little while after that, or a few seconds, or briefly, or as long as, as, long as uh, you feel so inclined. Uh, let's see, any other infinity breath that we're gonna cover? I don't think so. I think that's about, that's about it for that, right, Rana? Any others? Any, anything good. else you wanna cover? I think that's, yeah? I okay. think that's pretty good. Okay. As we lift the frequencies of our emotional, mental bodies, our chakra system begins to spin much faster and in a harmonious fashion. This results in an ignition or activation of the etheric energy or the pranic tube of light that runs along the spinal column up through the mandula oblongata or the ascension chakra into the sacred mind and out the crown chakra. The coiled energy called kundalini which contains the sacred white fire seed atoms of creator light called adamantine particles begin to flow up the spinal column. The portals to the sacred heart are opened so that we now are receiving adamantine particles of light via the back portal of our sacred heart as well as downward flow through our crown chakra and an upward flow of the kundalini fire along our sacred rod of power and light. This process will speed up and magnify, be magnified if we use the gift of conscious breathing, such as the infinity breath or other deep breathing techniques. We have been such shallow breathers all of our life. Very few people actually breathe from, did belly breathing or did breathing uh, exercises that would help them to uh, really energize their body with the breath. And as we do that, it is important because we talk about the sacred mind and the sacred heart. There are membranes of light that protected those. Just the, these membranes of light in different areas keep us from accessing those areas until our frequencies come to the level or the point or the vibrational uh, frequency so we can dissolve those and we can begin to access our sacred mind. The pituitary and the pineal are some of those mo the most important things within our brain structure. 
A lot of people, you've heard them say that we only use 10% of our brain capacity. And in a most recent message, Michael said, you use all of your brain capacity. It's your mind that is only using 10% of the brain. That's what the brain contains. Because we have stored within our sacred mind all of our memories, our past history, condensed, only the good part. Just like now, we're not taking the negative with us. Michael has said, you're going back through the past, healing the past, as you go forward to the future. Because the future, how many of you are losing? It seems like you can't remember your childhood. There are so many things that you just can't remember anymore. That's because we have a first, second, third, fourth, fifth dimensional levels within our brain. And within our sacred mind, even up in the sixth dimension. And so for so many ages, we were using our human, animal human nature. We were only tapping into the third and just the astral planes, the first three levels of the fourth dimension. And we were in the survival mode, those three lower chakras of survival, ego, desire, power. And at the time that we sank into that density, our soul was supposed to be the director and our guide. Well, our ego desire body took over. And so we followed the ego desire body instead of the soul. The soul is always focused inward. It is a group energy. It is an energy of union, a united energy. And we knew that all the love Everything that we needed and desired started inward, where the ego projected outward to seek happiness, things, people, activities, which brought us a moment of satisfaction or a little, uh, a, a little feeling of joy. Michael used to say, let us explain to you the difference between happiness, joy, and bliss. Happiness is vibration, energy of the ego desire body. So you're always seeking outside of yourself. Joy is when you begin to connect with your soul and you begin to understand more about who you truly are and things begin to happen when you're in a positive mode and, and you are sending forth good energy. You begin to see how the results are, the rewards for it. And so you have these moments of, of joy and you are on kind of like this wave sign where you go up into joy and then down, down in the lower, the ego and so on. But when you move into the sacred heart and you begin to use your sacred mind, you move into the state of joy but also the state of bliss. Even at the time when I, I have gone through trials and these trials and tests lately and I would be feeling the sadness, there was also a feeling of bliss and joy and harmony and knowing that it was all going to be okay. I knew it was all for a purpose and all I had to do was stay, stay strong, stay centered, in my heart center, take the steps, not get thrown off, and it would all be okay. It always has been from the time that I started working with Archangel Michael. Everything he has ever told me has come true. Perhaps not quite in the way or the time frame that I would have liked, but it was always perfect when I look back in retrospect. Mokus Priya over here, one of my ancient, ancient soul friends, when she came last year, or when I went to the City of Light, or I, I don't know when, but Michael said, you have been on a path for a long time together, and you have issues much the same, and they will be resolved as you go forward, because you have been reunited, you re reunited so that you can move forward together. And in a different way, the same thing that was happening to me has been happening to her as well. It was a great blessing to be reunited with her because it, it filled, it's filled a spot within our inner being that we recognized and I, I went to, she, that's where I went, when I went to New York, 
to her city of light sanctuary, which is a miracle. And oh, Cindy, it was such a great trip for Cindy. I took Cindy got to go there for her birthday. But it is amazing how these things happen. And so what we want to help each other do is when we're in these situations, to stay strong. And we have the tools, the infinity breath, return to center. And later on, we'll be talking about the five by five breath and how important that is and what that, that's the next step and how that has magically transformed so much in my life and different ones that I've spoken to. It is amazing how these things happen. And so what we want to help each other do is when we're in these situations to stay strong and we have the tools, the infinity breath, return to center. And later on, we'll be talking about the five by five breath and how important that is and what that, that's the next step and how that has magically transformed so much in my life and different ones that I've spoken to. I don't remember. Did I read this? I did, didn't yes, I? Yes, you did. I get so far out. Talk about being on a high. <laughs> but anyway, Randy is going to take you through a meditation before we break for lunch. And what we are doing with you is very important at this time. That's why we're concentrating a lot on having you in that altered state, as we say, but also these meditations, because it is going to give us the strength that we're going to need to go forward. It is going to allow you to have the benefit of what we've had to go through, so you do not have to go through the test so radically like we have. We are making it easier for you to move up that path of light more quickly. Hey, I'm going to explain a little bit about what we're going to do here before we do it. We're going to go through the chakras and then we're going to connect with our, our uh, soul self. Our, we're going to move up through the chakras and go up into the soul star chakra above the head. And then we're going to come bring that energy back down and connect with our soul and our heart center. And... That's what we're going to do. And we're going to move into that state. We're going to start out the same way we did with the alpha state. But it's not necessary. You don't need to necessarily. We're just going to do the count. You can visualize the sphere at the top of the head of your, of your head if you like. But it's not, it's not necessary to do that. So if you'll close your eyes. You just center yourself. Take a few moments, make yourself comfortable. Just watch your breath for a while. Watching your breath. Inhale, three, three, three. Inhale, two, two, two. Inhale, one, one, one. Moving deeper, 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 moving deeper into the core of your being. Deeper into the core of your being. And as you hear the sound of my voice, it takes you even deeper, even deeper into your subconscious. 
to the core of your being. Totally relaxed. Relaxed. Finding that wonderful place within where everything just feels wonderful, just feels right. Feeling so good, so, so good. Moving even deeper now, going deep, even deeper. I am are the most empowering words you will ever speak. Starting at the root chakra now. Moving our attention to our root chakra. Moving your attention to your root chakra. You may notice a color. It could be the typical red color if you notice it. It may be some other color. Now repeat to yourself. I am strong and truthful to yourself. I am strong and truthful. And as we say these words, as you say these words, feel the energy of the words. Words carry a, an energy. Feel the energy. Or sense in some other way the energy of these words. Maybe they'll present a color. They can present themselves in various ways. And now, I am powerful in my thought, action, and deeds. Feeling the energy of the words. I am strong and self-disciplined. I am able to claim and manifest abundance. Feeling the energy. I am courageous. I am using my willpower to speak my truth and stand in my integrity. I am taking right action. to manifest all that I desire. In order to live up to my highest potential. Staying in that root chakra for a little while longer. Feeling your strength, feeling your power, feeling your self-discipline, feeling your courage, your ability to speak your truth and stand in your integrity, and your ability to, to take action. Oh. 
owning those attributes, being those attributes. Moving now to the navel chakra, the sacral chakra. You may sense an energy, a color. Maybe it's orange, maybe it's some other color. You may hear a sound. Again, repeating after me. I am overcoming negative ego. Allowing my soul self to become the director of my life. I am confident. I am revitalized and healing. Feeling the energy, feeling the energy of the words, sensing the energy in some other way possibly. I am coming into alignment with my highest good. and purpose. I am able to concentrate with ease. I am aligning the ego desires with the desires of spirit, which are always in harmony with my divine mission. I am harmonizing my giving and receiving nature. I am blessed to give and feel worthy of receiving. Staying in the energy now of that sacral that chakra, that navel chakra. Allowing your soul self to become the director of your life. Feeling confident. Feeling revitalized and healed. Coming into alignment with your highest good and your highest purpose. Being able to give and receive easily and effortlessly with an open heart. Knowing that you're worthy. And now moving to the solar plexus chakra, which is yellow in color, or maybe some other color. Repeating after me to yourself, I am embracing and exercising my personal power. Feeling the energy of it, feeling the energy of the words.
feeling the energy of your personal power. I am employing self-control of my emotional desire body. I am more tolerant of and more patient with others. I am using tact and diplomacy in my interactions with others. I am enjoying clarity of thought. I am radiating the love energy of my I am presence. <coughs> to others through the front and back portals of my solar power center. I am a receptor and transducer of the higher frequency patterns of light. Within the solar plexus chakra now embracing your personal power, embracing your self-control of your emotional body, your patience, your tact, your diplomacy, your clarity of thought. As you radiate love from your solar power center. Moving now to the heart chakra. Maybe green in color, maybe some other color. I am benefiting from an open heart center, receptive to the life force from my higher self, and I am presence. which feeds the threefold flame of divine will, wisdom, and love. I am healing any impacted energy within my heart center, which brings balance, peace, and harmonious feelings into my awareness. And in turn creates a sense of well-being, promoting good health and vitality. I am drawing more and more love from my higher source radiating it out to others, resulting in a compassionate nature and unconditional love. I am a divine spark of the Creator and therefore worthy of love. Staying in your heart center. Healing any, any impact.
compacted energies, feeling a sense of balance and peace and harmony. Knowing that you are a divine spark of the creator and therefore worthy of love. Moving through the throat chakra now. Maybe blue in energy. I am reclaiming my spiritual power. Speaking my truth as I know it with discernment, discretion, and compassion. I am tapping into the universal energy of creation. Acknowledging that thoughts, words, emotions, and actions are all forms of energy. Reclaiming your spiritual power now in your throat chakra. Speaking your truth. Employing discernment. Tapping into the universal energy of creation. Moving now to the brow chakra, the third eye chakra. And that one may be indigo in color. With a keen perception beyond duality. I am clearing any and all distortions as I integrate the luminescence of the higher rays. Acknowledging that clairvoyance is a a gift, a gift that we all have, giving us a perception beyond duality. Acknowledging direct contact with your soul, your higher self, and your I am presence. Moving now to the crown chakra, which may be violet in color. I am merging my ego, my personality ego, with my soul, higher self, and I am presence. I am enlightened, inspired, and wise, perceiving a new world. I am building a bridge between the third, fourth, and fifth dimensions. I am anchoring and integrating new ideas and frequency patterns via purification, transformation, and inspiration. I am developing the qualities of invocation, manifestation, service, diplomacy, discernment, and refinement. I am a master at purifying and requalifying energy. I am a co-creator of love and light. Acknowledging that you are a master at requalifying energy. That you are a co-creator of love 
and light. Moving your consciousness now to your soul star chakra. That may be iridescent white in color. And it could be anywhere from six to inches to as much as two feet above your head, possibly. You'll place your attention there and you'll tune into your soul star chakra in that vicinity. Tuning into your soul star. And now maintaining this divine connection with your soul star chakra. Allow your consciousness to gently drift down into your sacred heart. Gently drifting down into your sacred heart. Moving even deeper now. Going even deeper to the core of your being as your consciousness moves to your sacred heart. And merges with your soul self, the essence of your being. Simply allow this enriching experience to unfold in its own way, embracing the essence of your being. Embracing the essence of your being. in touch with the essence of your being. Feeling the connection to your soul. Moving even deeper now into that connection with your soul. That wonderful, sweet, sublime connection with your soul. You are your soul. And now in a moment, we're going to come back. And as we do, maintain this state, maintain a part of this feeling, this wonderful sense of a deep connection with your soul, carrying this with you as you go through your day. There's a smile coming to your face if it's not there already. And you'll find yourself smiling as you go about your day, remembering this wonderful connection with your soul. Coming back now, slowly coming back at your own pace. And as you find yourself smiling, you will remember this transcendent experience of connecting with your soul. And as you look at the other beings, that you interact with today, you'll see a reflection of your soul within them when they smile. Just sit there for a while. Allow your eyes to open at your own pace. (coughs) But when you do come back, remember to maintain 
Come back, holding on to some of that, that feeling. Carry some of that with you throughout your day. And when you look at another person and smile at them today, know that you're seeing them. You're looking into their soul and they're looking into your soul. I'm seeing a few souls here right now. <laughs>